after serving two terms on North Charleston City Council, Virginia Jameson is stepping down. I speak exclusively with the councilwoman about her time on City Council and what's next for her for this edition of Quentin's Close Ups. And if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel and like Quentin's Close Ups on Facebook. North Charleston Councilwoman Virginia Jameson. Welcome back to Quentin's Close Ups. Good morning, Quentin. Thank you so very much for giving me this opportunity. Um, it's been a long time coming, but change is coming to the city of North Charleston, the city of my birth. And thank you for being so involved. Yes, ma'am. You talk about change. Obviously, you've been serving North Charleston, North Charleston City Council for eight years. And as of today, which is January 2nd, you'll be departing and going into, sun into the sunset and retiring. <laughs> Um, you're absolutely correct, Clinton. My work history is very long, and I've been involved in a lot of things militarily. I'm still involved with my alumni association. Um, medically, I've been a health care provider for a long time. Um, worked in various er areas with chronic and critical um, patient needs. So, um, again, it's my time. Um, I will reference uh, Mr. Sam Cook. I will reference Mr. Sam Cook. And his song has been a long time coming, but change will come. So now I will spend the morning drinking coffee <laughs> on my back porch um, and, and just looking at the, at the cars that are speeding by. And hopefully, Hopefully the noise will be reduced in the coming time. Well, let's start right there. What is the latest on the noise reduction corridor and your efforts to get a wall there to keep that noise from coming into the neighborhood? Well, Quentin, it's been a long, 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 long task for me, um, but it has made me uh, be a, I'm critically aware of the need and since 2010 I have been addressing noise in this corridor I have received a lot of promises I have received a lot of maybes I have also received you can't be done so as I navigated through this process I wanted to make sure that I had touched every part of it meaning the people at SCDOT, um, the, the elected officials at Charleston County, and in the city that I served for eight years here in North Charleston. Well, I have made that contact, and Miss um, Christy Hall, she is the secretary of the South Carolina Department of Transportation, and Miss Hall stepped up to the plate two years ago. And she really got involved with me on a personal level, assigning someone from her office at SCDOT to work with me one-on-one um, -on -one to address this need. As you know, um, from the federal level, there is a lot of infrastructure problems that had not been addressed for a long, long time. What the Joe Biden administration, we, he did. His administration came online and started addressing these problems. Um, in 2022, we applied for a bill grant. Well, in reading over all of that, it was it was like an opportunity, so we took it. Um, our grant application was not approved, but Secretary Hall went a little bit further, and she said, "Stay on it," and we did. In August of this year, 2020, oh, of last year, 2023, right. um, Ms. Roxanne and Shetta um, contacted me and said, Ms. Jamison, um, we're going to go for another grant application, and it's about um, connecting communities. Well, Clinton, I was elated. I was elated. We got everybody on the phone. Um, the Council of Governors even assigned somebody to this task to, to sit there with us to hear all of the narratives. And we did apply for the grant in this past August. So I'm waiting near the phone every minute of the day with anticipation to hear job well done to again address that Sam Cook narrative. It's been a long time coming, but change has come to the quarter of I-26 from the 52 connected to Highway 78. Mm. And um, it's, got, it's got to be a blast. And, and Quentin, I want to say this. If the grant is approved for $15 million, 
I certainly hope, I certainly hope SCDOT has taken the gauntlet on this and they said whatever buy-in that um, we at the local level need to do, they will do it. But I certainly hope that Charleston County, um, uh, the clog is limited in what they can do, but I certainly hope that North Charleston will also add some funds to this this pocket, do some ingratiating things to make this a a, a, a corridor of, of, of of, of livability and quality of life. Councilwoman Jameson, let me ask you this. I call you Councilwoman all the time, off the phone, on the phone. Well, I'm going to be the honorable after. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be the honorable. <laughs> Thank you, Clint, for always being so nice. And we do laugh and quit. A kid around because we formed the relationship and alliance over these last eight years. But, sir, I take your job very, very seriously, and you take my position um, very, very seriously. So, that's not anything about any disrespect. It is about us making each other as comfortable as possible in this, <laughs> in this scenario. <laughs> And speaking of this particular scenario, and I want to get back to what you just said in, in a few minutes, but Councilwoman, what buy-in is needed right now to make certain that you can actually connect this community with livability and quality of life? Well, when we looked at the graph, the buy-in from the local, are you just speaking about this I-26 corridor. Yes, yeah, so when we looked at the grant, of course, that's the first thing that popped out. And for $15 million, our buy-in was maybe $2.5 million. So I didn't understand, um, you know, why that was such a problem for everybody when we're spending so much money with um, just doing um, architectural drawings and, and, and a projection of, of projects when this has been on the table since 2013. 2010. Wow. So what architectural design was drafted up for this particular project? Well, like I said, we've been working this since 2010. Um, the county came up with selected a design mm. that would be in, in their um, evaluation of pro at the project sure. that would be applicable to noise reduction in that corridor. Mm. It was above and beyond the height of the the project, the length of the project, oh. all of those things are already on paper. Mm. So that means that we we may not we have to review that piece, mm. but we may not have to go in depth since we've already gotten that information. The other thing that was so significant is that on our first first run, we identified that the noise exceeded the Federal Highway Administration guidelines. So we knew that. And so we've got that data. A lot of a lot of my constituents bought into this. I got to re, um, uh, just be cognizant of uh, one of my guy guys on the ground, and I don't want to call his name because he's really a, a, a great guy, and I haven't gotten his permission. But he has been at my back door every minute since 2010 and he has been giving me information he is my research person he go collects the data he collects best um, circumstances best practices and he has done this throughout the country so we had all of that information right at our fingertips um, and I certainly hope Clinton that we go forward that we be inclusive that we realize the the, the the noise and what it can do for, do against livability and quality of life and health. Yes, ma'am. Health. Noise is an exacerbator of cardiovascular disease, pulmonary disease. Noise is an exacerbator of sleep deprivation. Um, noise is that silent, silent exacerbator. Of death. Mm. From 2010 to right now, Councilwoman Jamison, in your neighborhood with the residents that you speak with, what health issues have accumulated because of this noise? Well, I can't say that it started because of the noise, but I can say it's been exacerbated mm. because of the noise. I can say that there's a, a, a my next door neighbor, matter of fact, um, he has some um, health issues. He has some um, issues with hearing. He has some issues with um, lung um, problems and all of that. Um, he is 
always on pins and needles. He's always saying, Virginia, when is it going to happen? And I said, you know, really and truly, I don't know when. But then I'm asking if not now, when? Mm. And, uh, and, and, and there's another young man, he had some clinical issues, militarily retired. Um, he is really worried about the noise that causes him to be kind of claustrophobic. Sure. So these are all things that I have learned. Um, uh, several um, residents or in the area, they bring their parents to live with them, and of course, not thinking about the noise corridor and what it can do to quality of life and livability and exacerbation. Mm. Look, let me ask you this, Councilwoman. As you know, North Charleston is growing tremendously by the day. So, with that growth, how much has the noise level been reduced, uh, increased? Exponentially. Quentin, as I said, my guy on the ground, he did the study and he looked over the, the, the United States and even in foreign countries mm. and in certain areas, noise is just, it's, 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 it's a focus, focal point. Mm. And if you've got this growth, 120, we have 120,000 people that live in the city of North Charleston and you multiply that by 2.5 cars and I don't know how to five come in, but now you've got it increase in traffic. That I-26 is the entrance way for every transporter you can imagine. Um, the transporter, the size of the transporters have changed. So again, that puts in a, an additional um, increase in noise, you know, on that corridor. I, uh, and I, I don't, recently, I don't think it's been in the last year, but I did ask SCDOT for a traffic count. Mm. I did ask the COG for a traffic count. Right. And it was very, 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 very disturbing that based on this traffic count, based on the fact that um, the noise level as mandated by the Federal Highway Administration had been exceeded and it was at critical times of the day that that noise was exceeded. Early morning, midday, early evening, right. and late night. Wow. So that's my whole day in one, yeah. <laughs> in one area there. So, you know, you have to, and again, it goes back to the heart of the representatives. It goes back to the heart of the men and women. It goes back to the heart to prioritization. How do we prioritize the needs of our city, our county, and our state? Councilwoman, let me ask you this. On the weekends, does that noise level get reduced significantly? Um, the hours may change. But then you have the motorcycle riders that race that corridor every night after 12 o'clock, after 12 a.m. Um, and you have that that driver with that exhaust that's unbelievably loud, especially since the Environmental Protection Agency, I thought, had mandated um, you know noise levels for cars. Yeah. But evidently, that's not being um, addressed anymore. So then you have uh, me or my neighbors, or just the homeowners in that corridor. Um, you know, they maybe just settle down for a night of, of relaxation and sleep. And then all of a sudden, this motorcycle team drives through this corridor. Well, you, you've just disrupted my whole night. Mm -hmm. So I come into the kitchen just to get a drink of water. And there are flashing blue lights in that corridor right behind their homes. Um, you, major accidents are there. Cars going off the road in the ditch. I did see that SCDOT had just put up a guardrail. True. And we need that guardrail at Otranto and Deerwood right now. <laughs> so um, these are things that, that can be very, very kind of, that not a lot of thought had been placed on these livability issues, these quality of life issues, these um, disregard for 
home ownership. Mm. Um, what I have seen in the in that whole corridor is that there's been a change of home ownership. Um, there, the, in, in, in two particular areas that I can see that home ownership has gone away mm. and now we have very transient people right. that doesn't have any reason to stay if they find that the noise is debilitating or, or interrupt their quality of sleep or their quality of relaxation they move you know you have a some people do month to month lease, some people do six months lease, some people do a year lease. So at the end of that period, they move. But when I selected my home, for all of the reasons that you normally buy a home for, again, your surroundings, your easy access to that home as you grow older, you want to make sure that you have the kind of doors, um, the kind of um, uh, walk up and all of those things. And those are things that I looked critically at when I was purchasing my home. And um, I don't want to go. I don't want to go anywhere. I have lived in Northwoods, Northwood Estate, for since 1985. Mm. Um, and I'm kind of comfortable where I am. I have the best neighbors in the whole wide world. If they do not see me out there working in that yard, they're going to call that phone. Or they're going to ring that doorbell and say, are you okay? Right. I have the best neighbors in the world who see me out there trying to put in a new mailbox. And he'll walk over and say, um, what, are, what are you doing? And I'll tell them what I'm doing. And then he'll say, well, I got this, okay? And I said, okay, well, you make sure you send me an invoice. And he never sends the invoice. So I said, you know, cost uh, a statement for what he's done. And not even a, 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 a paper trail or anything, but just tell me what I need to do for you. Sure. And um, I never hear anything about that. He said, you do it every day. So I'm trying to figure out, well, what do I do every day? <laughs> your yard is immaculate. Your, your property stays and in, in the best condition. So that's what neighborhoods do. Mm. That's what people who are homeowners do. And if you're transient, I like that word, transient, then it makes a, 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 a change of attitude. attitude. So let me ask you this, Councilwoman, since 2010, how many people have actually owned homes in your district and how many people have actually moved out due to this noise? Well, I think I want to be specific to that noise corridor. Again, um, the District 3 was encompasses a, encompass about 10,000 people. Mm. Um, we have about 10 different neighborhoods. Some of them are big neighborhoods, some of them are small neighborhoods. So, so it's kind of hard to keep track of how many homes I could go gather that stat if I needed to. But I'm going to look at the Long Shadow New Rider Road sure. corridor that goes across um, Otranto and into Adair Park. I'm going to just look at those that corridor. And again, like I said, there are two different communities on that noise corridor has changed completely. Mm. Um, as far as home ownership, it's gone down. And I'll use percentage. If it was 100% home ownership, and now it's about 10 to 15%, then do the math. You can see that something is wrong. Something needs to be addressed. Um, and if not, may I win? Hey, Councilwoman, you talk about that home, home ownership potentially going to 10 to 15% because of this noise, uh, uh, obviously, noise problem. So, how many transit residents do you have in that area or along that corridor? Well, and that's the transient. Mm. That is the transient population. Mm. The people that move away. If they have a a month-to-month a -month lease, if they have a six-month lease, or if they have a year lease. Mm. At the end of that year, or at the end of that six months, that's a vacant property. Mm. So what is happening, Quentin, and I know this for a fact because I get this call or this mail um, card. Developers are buying those properties left and right. So now, and when you're dealing with developers, of course the, the bottom line is how much they're going to make on this deal. So are they setting us up for failure? 
are they setting us up for inverse condemnation of our property by not doing something about that noise factor? Are they depreciating air, a dollar value of our property, our expectations about having that degree of assets? So there's a lot of factors here. Mm. And believe it or not, as as political, as community leaders, I like community leaders rather than um, politicians, elected official. But in view of that, that conversation sometimes does not come to the table. In view of the needs of our city, that conversation does not come to the table. Um, the one thing that I found out that I thought was very disingenuous, single member districts. And I remembered when um, the activists on the ground worked for a single member district for representation for everybody. Sure. I, I remember that. I remember who led the fight. I remember how it was. I came about. But even in single member district, you still have to have that piece, that chart that brings the, the needs, not the wants, mm. the needs of the whole city. Put it on that graph and, and prioritize. Well, this district may want this, but we need to work with these people who need this thing, who needs their quality of life and their livability enhanced. And um, certainly hope going forward, this has been a discussion for many years, but certainly hope going forward with the new administration that we would identify some of the things that had not been addressed. And, and that's something that I'm stepping back. I've done my due diligence. I got promoted to retirement, <laughs> so, so I'm good. But I'm certainly going to still be that quieted voice in my concerns. Quieted, not not totally eliminated. I'm just going to tilt it down a little bit. <laughs> so, but anyway, and I'm asking as I did this when I did my um when I did my swearing in. Um, peace in 2020, I did this, I, I encourage the communities to get involved. I encourage communities to come to the table to, to discuss the issues. I encourage the communities that have improvement consoles, who have civic leagues or whatever, bring the problem to the correct people. And don't let it fall on the wayside. Mm. Keep it going. Keep it going. If Virginia Jameson can keep something going for uh, since 2010, never missed a beat. I have my chronological data already. I was going to print it and bring it to you this morning. Quick. <laughs> but for some reason, my computer said you're not doing anything today. Right. So, yeah. You've been working at this hard for, since 2010. So why is this not a priority for Charleston County? for the state government and local government? Well, Clinton, I ask myself that question every day, and I, I am applauding um, um, the, the Secretary of um, DOT, right. Department of Transportation, at the local level, and she has stepped up to the plate. Grand woman. She should be running for the President of the United States because she knows how to prioritize. She knows how to look at the needs and the wants of the situation. And again, everything is slow because... The Secretary of State may be on board with everything, but is the governor on board? Have, did they hear that conversation? Did they have that conversation? I want to tell you that I did speak to SCDOT commissioners in one of their sessions, and they got it. They got it. Got the little cards back saying, um, Ms. Jameson, thank you for addressing us. Uh, what you said really resonated. Um, there's also another agency, and I hope I, I, I say this right, um, and they're about the big projects in, in the state of South Carolina. Um, as you know, we've been talking about 526 forever. Sure. Um, as you know, we've got a big project going on with the um, 
526 um, project for going to East Cuckoo and West Ashley. Right. Um, there are a lot of projects going on, and these are the people who do the funding. Mm -hmm. And um, again, I would I would like to encourage them to look at the whole picture. Um, some people are more vocal than other people. Some people can state the facts better than other people, but don't look at that. Go back and put it on the table and look at it. What is the need? And prioritization is such a important thing for our communities. Prioritization, prioritizing, looking at the needs over the wants. So, as we're sitting right now, Councilwoman, what are the needs and wants for District 3 and overall for the city of North Charleston? I'm glad you asked that question. Um, as I as I prepared to um, leave our district as the city council representative, I did an analysis for myself. And I'll just tell you these things. The I-26 noise corridor, Highway 52 connected to Highway 78. The intersection of Otranto Road and Deerwood, something that has been on the table since 2016 when I first walked in the door. The new Palmer Commerce interchange that has really, and I'm not gonna say again, the need was not not gauged properly. Um, the conditions were not gauged properly. The, the original design that Charleston County selected and then later add on to it was not done and with professional ethics. Community safety, speeding in our our one communities. That's really a big problem. Now, we have the police on I-26. We have the police at the Home Depot. Right. We have the police, as a matter of fact, I just saw a car sitting at the, <laughs> the Navy Federal Credit Union. I didn't see anybody in the car. But we place cars throughout our city. So why can't we use some of the older cars that are not in use and not servable? Just just put those in communities, especially where there's these, these speeding issues, especially in our one communities where we have people walking, we have children playing in their yard that may just chance running out to get them get a ball or we have senior citizens backing out of their driveway and people ignoring the stop signs people ignoring that caution and if you if you go to district three we're like big old flash flashlight they're flashing lights everywhere there's a speed radar detector for instance oh yeah speed radar detector um pieces but are we collecting the data are we going back with what is the second piece of that that we need to make to give these people senior citizens children school um, a place in this district we have two schools in the district have we done our very best no matter how much it costs have we done our very best in ensuring that livability piece. Two more questions because I know the battery's running out, Councilwoman. But do you all have enough money to put infrastructure in your district right now? I really don't know that. I do know that if we did some grant writing, proper grant writing, if we did some more research, because there are a lot of grants out there, there are a lot of agencies who can help us with our, uh, our needs. Um, I think that monies would flow a little bit easier. Um, again, sometimes um, local government, the, you know, they feel, it, well, I don't want anything from the federal government, but that's where the money is. That's where all the tax dollars go. That's why uh, uh, President Biden was able to say we're doing this infrastructure piece. That money, you would not believe billions of dollars that have gone to different projects. Uh, there was a, a bridge that had collapsed numerous times and those people were able to go to this infrastructure thing piece to get that money. So there is money. Are we using the proper 
modalities to get that money? Are we using the needs of Air City to get that money? Uh, North Charleston is like a gold mine. When we when we inherited, it was it wasn't an inheritance. Uh, when we were uh, given full control over all that Navy Yard, that is a gold mine right there. Yeah. But let me just say this yes, one. Okay, and then retention ponds, right. sidewalk funding. Sure. We got two point five million dollars for sidewalks, but we really needed eight million dollars to make district mm. safe. Mm. Um, we have a gym, we have a recreation center, but have we maintained it um, for that total use, that total quality of, for the citizens in these areas? Going back to the Navy Yard. Did this present city council make it made a mistake by voting on this? Should they have waited until the new council, the new mayor, coming in to vote on this? Well, Clinton, the rush to a project of this magnitude, a rush to hire a developer for this magnitude of a, of a project. The rush to putting a rubber stamp on it will get you nothing but a return of noise act. It will get you nothing but a return of again monies that should be used right now to enhance the quality of life in the total city of North Charleston that has not been that's not being used. It's being used for again drawings, architectural drawings, it's being used for footprints without the citizens input and it's not right. I wasn't going to say that, but we're having a conversation, and I'll I'll speak that yeah, yes, I'll speak that into into existence into um, into the atmosphere. Right and wrong, mm -hmm. right, wrong, and fair. Mm -hmm. Anybody that's coming in this arena as an elected official who was elected by the people better put in their vocabulary right, wrong. And fair. What was right, what was wrong, and what was fair with this Navy Yard development? Well, I don't have all the data in front of me. Um, I received a, a, a trillion page binder um, um, on a couple of days before we were going to have an emergency meeting. And um, that was the weekend I was getting a little great grandson. Oh, yes who demands every minute of your attention. Um, he also, like, he, he, he's, he goes to daycare. So he all, he's like a, a, a germ carrier. So after I had the baby for the weekend, and, and then by that Monday, I was feeling like a, a, a rocky road. I didn't feel good at all. So I really didn't have a chance to look at that information. But um, I still have the binder if you want me to give it to you. Um, and I just didn't have a good feel for it. Prior to this, somebody said that in June we did talk about this, but it was in a very limited conversation, and it was in a conversation that we will look at the development. But from June until um, 1st of December, I hadn't... I mean, and again, I may, may have been left out of the loop, but I had not heard anything else about this. As far as already having a developer, a, com a combination of developers, knew nothing about this. Oh. So again, I'm going to fault myself, but I know that I'm the person who will copy everything, who reads everything, who looks at everything from a, a need standpoint. So, again, I will accept some of the responsibilities, but I will not accept the total responsibility. Show me the data. Show me when you showed it to me. Tell me when you told it to me. <laughs> and I will come back to say, might is right. Wrong is wrong. And when you can't be right and you can't be wrong, then you can't be fair. In Council Women in 20 seconds, when it comes to those projects that you mentioned in your district in regards to Charleston County having, I guess, jurisdiction over it, some, what, of, them, some, some of them, 
what professional ethics were not used? Well, I will pinpoint something that I'm very hurt by. Um, the Palmetto of Commerce and the change. We discussed one thing, and then something else came out of that. They selected the, 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 pro the project design that they wanted to use. And most recently, we found out that they're going to bring a bicycle path from Ingleside Boulevard across to Salamander. And the people are in awe. Like, and they started cutting out trees mm. to do this. And let me tell you, that was, that was a nightmare for me. And laughably, when I asked... Well, I don't know. I to ask Charleston County because I do keep all of my contact information and I have made a lot of friends at least I thought of people who I could talk to. I can call them on the phone and say update me on this and all that. And um, they said they weren't allowed to talk to me because I had um, filed a concern with the Federal Highway Administration. I said that was kind of funny. I said, well, did you talk to the city of Los Angeles? Did you talk to the attorney? Did you? Who did you talk to? If you didn't talk to me, I'm the city government representative in the area. Then who are you talking to? Mm. So that is another thing that has to happen. Collabor collaboration, communication, mm. um, the people on the ground needing to know. Quentin, I'm a communicator. Every month. I did a newsletter. I made myself available for every telephone call, for every email. Um, I made myself available for going over to their house, not just to hear what they're saying on the phone, but to quantify it by going to their homes, uh, to their backyard, or to their front porch, or just to their street mm. to look at it. Yes, ma'am. I'm the person that drove the community at least once a week. Um, so... I'm, not, I'm, I'm saying there was a lot of work to be done, a lot of work still to be done. I'm saying that the expertise that I brought to the table um, was maybe above and beyond. But if you're going to be committed to a district of 10,000 people, you better get to know your people. Mm -hmm. You better get to know your community. And... The community needs to get to know their city council person. Is that 10 seconds over yet? Yes, I think so. <laughs> but I want to thank you so much for all the years on Point Disclosed Up. And I want to say that in all the years, I, I, I've asked a lot of tough questions to you. Never once did you call and cuss me out or you confront me or be mad at me. So I thank you for being respectful of me, of me and understanding my job, which is to hold you all who are in power accountable. That's my job. Well, Quentin, whenever somebody needs to do that, it shows the level of insecurity in them. It has nothing to do with you. Because um, if you're not willing to discuss the type of question or you're not willing to say, well, let me, Mr. Washington, let me get back to you on this. That's then it, there's, that's the problem right there. We don't know everything. Right. And I pride myself on making a copy and I pride myself on being able to read and pride myself on information retention. And I want to thank you for your eight years of serving this great city. And we want to wish you all the best in the name of Jesus. Well, thank you. And I, I know that I'm surrounded by all of the angels that God sent to protect me over these eight years. And I'm still smiling. And I still have a lot of people that walk up to me every day and say, thank you. I was at the uh, Emancipation Proclamation Parade on yesterday. And they were in the cars driving by, but they never failed to say, hey, God, love Jesus. And, and, and you, you take away from these situations, good and bad. And I can tell you that I have more good than bad. Mm. But I will, this is still the city of my birth. Mm. Um, this is still the city of my birth. You can't change that. I'm not a Kamya. I'm a Binya. And I, I know the lay of the land. And hopefully we'll be having this conversation with the powers that be, even if I'm not the city council woman. 
Well, for maybe the last time, North Charleston City Councilwoman Virginia Jamison, thank you so much for your time and again. Welcome back to Quentin's Full Subs. And thank you, sir. Continue to do what you do. You are a voice. Thank you. I will. In the, in the city, in this tri county area. And they can't get rid of me. I'll be right here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't don't let them. Oh, of course don't not. let them. No, of course not. Man cannot get on your back unless you lean over. Mm. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>